Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing tonight? I hope you guys are doing good. I know I'm doing great. And so, uh, yes, we are going to be modeling the NCOV virus or NCOV on Plague Inc. And that's why I'm wearing a mask, just for fun, for a bit of, uh, <clears throat> I guess, atmosphere. As you can see, it's nighttime. It's pretty dark. So, uh, without further ado, let's start, uh, Really quick though, before we start, I just want to lay out some things first. First off, I'm by no means asking for everyone to panic. I don't want that at all. But, I am trying to w raise awareness to what is actually going on, uh, and I want everyone to know that. Number two. The second thing is, I am by no way saying that what happens in Plague Inc. is going to happen in real life. Not... Uh, by any way, uh, at all. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, I just think we should model it and it'd be a fun thing to do. So we're gonna start off. So this virus started in Huan, China, in the Hubei province, as you guys may know. <clears throat> this virus is very interesting. Uh, I'm actually very interested in it. Um, so what we believe happened was a bat that was infected gave the virus to a snake and the snake gave it to a human because where it came from was a wet market and uh, in wet markets they uh, sell these things all the time uh, and so that's how we believe it got into the human populace now uh, a lot of US news agencies are gonna say that we don't technically know what it is but the BBC did a whole report on it a while back about how it went from a bat to a snake to humans. And the reason we know this, uh, or at least have an idea of this, is because a lot of the genome of this virus has characteristics from snakes. And so that's a pretty good indicator of uh, <laughs> where the virus came from. Just like it has fragments of its genome uh, from bats as well. So. Uh, here we go. So, throughout this playthrough, basically, I also want to clear up some information or some misinformation about this pathogen that is, uh, being circulating, not just on the internet, but, uh, all throughout popular media. Like, uh, CNN and New York Times and stuff like that. So, first off, <clears throat> there is a lot of concern over- oh, and I'm evolving cough, and uh, I have to evolve sneezing to get fever, and there we go. With exception to pneumonia, these are all of the symptoms that this coronavirus has. So anyway, there was a study that was published in The Lancet uh, yesterday, and uh, the, a lot of the news outlets were just starting to report on it today, like live science. But uh, there is a news article in The Lancet yesterday, uh, a research paper. And this research paper basically said that, um, this research paper basically said that between the time frame, they, so it was a team of mathematicians and scientists, and they calculated that between the time frame of um, December 31st and last Saturday, or January 25th, they believe from their mathematical calcu calculations that the cases was, or that the number of cases was actually 75,800. Let's just take a minute on that. 75,800 cases. And that was being reported as 2,000. Now, you know, this may not have been the case. It was just a, 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 almost a simulation, but it was a calculated study to determine what the actual number of cases may be. And I'll link that research paper for you guys in the description down below. So take a look at that. So I believe that this virus has actually infected now around uh, two, uh, 22 countries. Uh, and I will also put down in the description below uh, a website, a Business Insider article that brings you up to all the live data statistics about this pathogen 
Uh, that does not factor in the estimated actual cases. So the whole purpose of this is, oh, 833 million infected. First death in China. The other day I was watching a, uh, a CNN video with their chief medical correspond correspondent. I'm not going to say his name. I'm sure you guys know who he is. But their chief medical correspondent. And he was saying that there's no reason to fear this. It's not the next, it's not the next 1918 Spanish flu because it's not that dangerous. It only kills 3% of cases. One, that may very well be wrong and we'll get into that later. And two, 1918 Spanish flu killed 150 million people, but it only had around a 2% fatality rate. A 2% fatality rate and it killed 150 million people. And at that time, we were saying that this virus, that this current one, NCOV, had a 3% fatality rate. It's, uh, it's kind of ridic r ridiculous. And, uh, you know, I see a lot of articles like this and it really irritates me of like, well, if you're worried about this, you might as well be worried about the flu. And it's like, no, they're completely different. We should all be worried about bird flu, but bird flu is not seasonal flu. There's a big difference. So because this pathogen most likely spreads by air, that is what we're going to do. Air one, air two. All right, and that's it. That's all we're going to evolve. But anyway, and that really irritated me because it's not the case at all. Seasonal flu in general, okay, in general, has around a 1% fatality rate. But the thing is, for seasonal flu, we have vaccines. This pathogen, there is no vaccine for. There is no vaccine, and it is exceedingly unlikely that any patient would have um, natural immunity to it. It is very, very unlikely. I, I think the chief medical correspondent there really made a mistake uh especially considering what the new uh especially considering what the new information is coming in right now so we're at uh two billion infected two billion infected and it's been about a year it's been a little over a year and we have two billion infected final article or research paper i want to talk to you guys about is one that was just published by various agencies of the chinese government the, their CDC, uh, Department of Defense, Automation, AI, and uh, Data Science. Uh, and there is one other, I'll put it up in the screen. And they did a study. They wanted to find out what the true r naught is. And for those of you guys who don't know, an r naught is the basic reproductive number. It basically means that for every one patient infected, whatever the r naught is, that many people will become infected by one patient. So, we thought, before this paper came out, and I should add that, uh, because of this situation, it has not been peer-reviewed yet. However, all the sources, at least from what I can tell, seem credible. But again, it has not been peer-reviewed yet. But honestly, until, uh, until the CDC or WHO does a similar study, we won't really know, but this study said that the r naught for this pathogen was no longer 2.5 or 3, it was, it was no longer 2.5 or 3, it was much more likely to be, or they determined it was 4.08. 4.08, that means for every one person infected, more than four people are infected by that one person. That is a big problem, especially when the WHO declares it a global health emergency, but then says, oh, but trade and travel to China should not be restricted. That is a big problem. 4.08, and again, I'll, I'll link that study in the description down below. 
in the same research article, not this one, or well, in the same research article, they also said what their new case fatality rate was, which they determined to be 6.5%. For reference, the case fatality rate for SARS was between 7 and 9%. The case fatality rate for 1918 Spanish flu was about 2%. This is 6.5% according to that study. And it makes sense. That and the other study that said there's most likely 75,800 people infected by last Saturday also really makes sense when you looked at how quickly China closed off all their borders instituted voluntary self-quarantine, you don't really do that for 9,000 cases. 6.5%. That means that it is fatal in 6.5% of cases, and then it, in, in enough, it's also in 20% of cases, it results in hospitalization. So, for any of you news agencies out there who say, Oh, this is no more dangerous than the flu. Please check your data because it is a lot more dangerous than seasonal flu. It's, I'll give you, it's not more dangerous than bird flu, but it is more dangerous than seasonal flu. A lot more dangerous. And additionally, there is a difference between seasonal flu and uh, bird flu and swine flu. There actually is a difference. So, We'll, we'll see what happens, but guys, uh, I'm not saying panic or anything like that, but I am saying please be aware. Where I live in the United States, they have sold out completely of all antiviral face masks. I just happen to have a stack of these on my own. They sold out of all of them. So... Keep that in mind, guys. Be safe. Be very careful. And so we are at 5.7 or 5.7 billion infected. 5.8. Once it gets to 6 billion infected, I'm gonna pause the game and we're gonna finish off this episode. Kill more than Black Death. 60 million, constantly increasing. This is just with pneumonia, guys. Pneumonia is, 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 is not, a not a, a light thing. It's not a light thing. And, you know, that's the other thing. I'm, I'm tired of this argument that had been circulating among the news media of, well, this virus isn't that dangerous, or isn't a concern because it only affects the elderly. All right, we're at six billion. We're going to pause right here. I can't believe that was an argument. That it's not that dangerous because it only affects the elderly. I don't know about you guys, but my grandma lives in Illinois. And they have cases in Illinois. And I would not want my grandma to get this pathogen. So, there's a lot of evidence now to suggest that the r naught is 4 or higher. That the... Case fatality rate is 6.5% and higher. And there's also evidence now to suggest that last Saturday it was actually 75,800 cases. Additionally, that same research paper that said that assumed that that virus had an R0 of 2, of 2.5. It assumed it had an R0 of 2.5. And yet it said that last Saturday there were probably 75 million or 75,800 patients infected. I did the math. A 3% fatality rate for that would be 2,500 patients. So don't I don't want anyone panicking because of this video. That's the last thing I want. But I want you guys to realize that this is no laughing matter. And that this pathogen does actually propose risk or pose risk. So, that being said, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you guys, if any of you out there are uh, really big science people and into the science like I am, 
and he wrote a, a video of me explicitly talking about the science of um, NCOV, let me know in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up and uh, I can make that happen. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. Be safe, uh, take care, and be healthy. I'll see you guys later. Thank you.